Hey folks, today I'm gonna to be showing you all of my top favorite features that you're gonna find in the brand new operating system for the Mac, Mac OS Mojave. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, we got a lot to cover, so let's dive right into it. We're gonna start off today's class with talking about should you upgrade for those of you who have not already done so. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about what you need to do before you upgrade your Mac and how to check for incompatible software. For those of you out there who would like to just simply skip ahead to the new features, you're welcome to jump ahead to the time code that you just saw flash on your screen. The first thing that you wanna do before you go installing Mojave is you wanna make sure that everything that you own is already compatible and if it's not, just be prepared that you might need to upgrade a few things. Now, there are two suites of applications that I have found so far uh, that have problems with running on Mojave, and those two are Microsoft Office for 2011 and the Adobe Creative Suite 5, so CS5. Also, any apps that are running in 32-bit on your computer are either not going to run or are going to run with problems. So how do you find out which of the apps on your computer are running in 32-bit? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to show you right now. The way you find out is you're going to go to the Apple icon at the very top left corner. Go to About This Mac. On the next screen, you're going to click on where it says System Report. And in the left-hand column, you're gonna look for where it says software and click on applications. Now this next screen might look slightly different on some of your computers, especially if you are running, in fact, an older operating system. But if you look here on mine, over here at the top right, it says 64-bit Intel, and the options below that are just simply either yes or no. If you click on the category at the top, you can trigger it so that all of them are organized together, thus giving you a really easy way to discover which of your apps may not be compatible. If you do happen to be one of those people who do have either an older copy of Microsoft Office or CS5, I'm going to give you some helpful links down below in the description of this video. Also, just make sure that you have enough free space on your Mac to support Mojave. Uh, depending on which operating system you're coming from, it's going to require a minimum of 12 and a half gigabytes and up to 18 and a half gigabytes because it's got to pull out one operating system, pull down another one and install it and then release the old one. So uh, if you go here into uh, About This Mac, you should hopefully have this storage tab, unless you're on a really old operating system. Uh, and so that'll give you kind of an idea of how much free space you have on your computer. If you do, in fact, need to get back a little bit more space, I would encourage you to check out a little class that I did a while ago called How to Clean Up Your Apple Computer. Link to that down below in the description. Also, if you have other questions about should you upgrade, I'm going to put a lot more information again down below. Of course, another thing that every Mac user should do before upgrading their operating system is always have a current backup of your data. The easiest way is to use Time Machine, but these days you can use iCloud for quite a few aspects of backup as well. The first new feature, which I frankly really can't show you, is there is now support to FaceTime call up to 32 people at the same time. While I doubt I'll be talking to that many people, uh, it will be great to be able to call more than one person at the same time, and I think a lot of other users will agree. The next feature we're going to be talking about is called Continuity Camera, and I can tell you right off the bat, this is one of my favorite features. So what this allows you to do is if you have an iPhone or an iPad running at least iOS 12, you can on your Mac running Mojave, secondary click, some of you know this as a right click, and one of the options that you'll see here is import from iPhone or iPad, and you can use this for scanning photos or documents. You can access this feature from many different places in the Mac. Frankly, probably one of the most handy is gonna be email. So if you have a document that you need to scan, you don't need to buy a scanner anymore. You can just secondary click inside the email and use this feature to scan it, even if there's multiple pages and it will save it as a PDF. Do you love that feature? Let me know in the comments section. The next feature that we're going over is referred to as Stacks, and this is a great feature for any of you who have trouble with having a cluttered desktop. Check this out. Now all you have to do is secondary click on your desktop, and you'll see that there's an option to use Stacks. Now if you ever want to turn this feature off, all you have to do is secondary click again and just uncheck it. Now there are different ways that you can organize your Stacks. You can see here in this case by default, it has organized them all by kind. So for example, all of my 
documents are together. So if I click on this, you can see that it expands. I click it again and it hides them. I click into images, those expand, but it just keeps your desktop nice and clean. Now there are other methods that you can use to organize this. So if I secondary click, you'll see one of the options here is group stacks by. Now the default is kind, but you can also switch it to, for example, date last opened. So it'll put your most recent items here at the very top, and then some of your older items will be towards the bottom. The next new feature is great for any of you who need screenshots. The new command is command shift five, but there's another way that you can get into it that you might prefer. So if you go into Launchpad, you've probably at some point seen this little folder called Other. Well, now here in Other is a dedicated app called Screenshot. And if you think that you might use this utility often, you might want to consider dragging it and dropping it into your doc, which I actually already did before this class. It's right there. So uh, clicking on this is the exact same thing as uh, hitting Command Shift 5 on your keyboard. And this just gives you several different ways to take screenshots. So for example, this first option here is to take a photo of the entire screen, whereas this next one is going to capture a selective window. So let's say, for example, you're having a technical support problem and you're trying to show your kid, you know, maybe a, a shot of what's going on on your screen, this might be the best method because it's just going to show them what application you have in front of you. The other option here is to just capture a portion of a window. So you can see when I click on that, I can drag the corners here and reshape and move this wherever I want and then just hit capture down here at the bottom right to take a picture. Now in my case, it's going to save these by default to the desktop. Uh, if you want to change that up, that's where options is right here. So you can tell it exactly where to go to. You can even now go directly into mail. You can go directly into a message. So that's going to be definitely handy for some people out there. There's also options here for recording your screen as in video. So uh, same deal here. You can record the entire screen or just a portion of the screen. Now keep in mind, folks, if you ever want to take a private lesson with yours truly, that is something that I do when I have some free time. If you ever want to book a lesson with me, you can find all of the information on my website at techtalkamerica.com slash private lessons. The next feature we're talking about is one that you may have already noticed. Uh, this computer is now running in what is referred to as dark mode. Sounds like something out of Star Wars. It's not. So if you go into System Preferences, here under General, you will see that now we can change the appearance from a light theme, kind of the classic traditional light theme, to a dark mode. They say this is better on your eyes, especially in low light environments. For me personally, I have actually had some trouble uh, just with my own eyes, so normally on my screen I do tend to keep it in light mode. You'll also notice here that you can now add a few different accent colors. So for example, you see the little arrows here? Those are considered accent colors. So you can switch them over now to be a few different colors. So if you want to go funky, you can go red, green, yellow, whatever you want. The next feature that we're going to be going over is one that I can't truly demo for you because there's still apparently some sort of bugs with my screen recording software because when I tried to record it for you, it didn't go so well. But anyways, here in Desktop and Screensaver, you will find that we have two new options at the very top. They're called Dynamic Desktop. And the two options that we have are the one you can see currently in the background, the Mojave Desert, and the other is this Solar Gradient. And the idea with either of these options is that over the course of the day, the image will change and gradually as you enter evening, your screen becomes dimmer, which makes it easier for your brain to shut down in the evening. Now, if you like the feature here of time lapse, but maybe not so much only having two options. There is another app that I have recommended for years now. The name of the app is Magic Window 4K. You can get it either through the App Store or links on my website at techtalkamerica.com. By the way, I have a page where I recommend all of the various apps that uh, I tend to talk about. Uh, this app, basically what it does is replace your desktop background with time-lapse photography from 140 different locations around the planet. It is amazing photography, and I'm sorry, but they really kick Apple's butt in this category. The dynamic desktop is a cute idea, but these guys went way further with that idea a long time ago. The next new feature that we're going to be talking about is a new way that you can view your files on your Mac, and that is to use gallery mode, which replaces cover flow. So for example, when I open up the files on my desktop, you'll notice up here uh, at the top, we have the different uh, ways that you can view your files. So for example, we have icon view, we have list view, 
Uh, this next view is really great when you have a lot of folders and then other files inside of those folders and other folders inside of those folders. Uh, but this right here, this is the brand new method. This is gallery mode. And what you'll notice is that here on the right-hand side, we have expanded metadata. So for people who are photographers, this is probably going to be a very nice feature. We also have a few handy tools that are now down here at the bottom right. For example, you can rotate uh, if it's an image, you can rotate it, you can mark it up. In the case of video files, let me pick one right here. This is actually a video. You'll see we have an option to trim right here from Finder without even having to really truly open the video. We can do that right from here. Another minor new feature that you'll find is there is now a space in your dock for recently used apps, which you'll see down here at the bottom right. Now, if you don't like this feature and would like to remove it, just simply go into System Preferences. From there, go into Dock, and it's right here at the bottom. Another major new change in macOS Mojave is there are four new applications, including HomeKit Control, News, Stocks, and Voice Memos. A lot of these are just basically taking functionality from your iPhone and iPad and bringing it to the Mac in a way that is very clean, organized, and of course, syncs across the board. The first of these new apps is the brand new HomeKit app, which has already been available on the iPhone and iPad, but now is available on the Mac. I personally don't really use this app only because I have found it to be so unreliable, where I have found accessories just randomly dropping for no apparent reason in the past. So for those of you out there who do use it, I'm sure you'll be happy to learn that you can now do those same things from your Mac, but personally, I probably won't be using this. For those of you who are involved with the stock market, you'll be very happy to know that now the Stocks app has news integration. So that, for example, if you, let's say you follow Amazon, you can click on them and then see stories about the company come out right beneath it and from all sorts of different news sources. The next new app that you'll discover when you upgrade your Mac to Mojave is that Apple has now brought the News app to the Mac. So this is an example of uh, the type of screen that you'll see when you open up the News app. As you'll see here, it looks really nice in full screen mode. And if you look over here on the left-hand side, this is where you can populate this with all of the different topics and channels that you are interested in. So what I recommend you consider doing is go up here to the top left and just type in the different types of things that interest you. So for example, let's say you're into healthy cooking. As you can see here, I can either choose to follow any of these channels just by clicking the little heart icon next to them, or I can just follow it by topic and that way it's gonna pull from different news sources. The Voice Memo app, it's very clean, very simple. And if you need to take an audio note to go, it's certainly one way to do it. Another minor new feature that you'll find is that now there is emoji support built into the Apple Mail program. By the way, there is actually a shortcut for this if you want to learn it. It's Control, Command, and the space bar all at the same time. And so that just pulls up this little window, pick whatever emoji you want, and click on it, and it's inserted. Another app that got a bit of a makeover, making it a lot more fun and a lot less we'll call it listy, is the App Store. So now it's a lot more fun to kind of go through here and explore different apps that you can download. One of the features that I love is that uh, quite a few of these apps now have video previews, which I think is a lot more handy compared to just a simple still image. And actually, while we're here, let me give you one last little tip. Anytime you install a new operating system on your Mac, one of the things a lot of people forget to do immediately after, go to the App Store, go to Updates. Just make sure everything's up to date. Not everything will run instantly as soon as you're done downloading it. And it's important to keep in mind that anytime you install a new operating system, there are things that go on in the background. So sometimes it can be a little bit sluggish at first while some of those things are going on getting processed in the background. If you enjoyed watching this video, I do appreciate it if you hit the little thumbs up like button. And also please leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed.